Ask any filmmaker what are the keys to getting a great image and I guarantee they'll bring up the lighting. Not only can it help tell the story, but it can guide the viewer's eye to see exactly what the filmmaker wants them to see. Making an actor stand out from a busy background or showcasing the warm light coming in from a window. But here's the thing, while that's all totally true, everything you just saw was totally done in post, even what's going on around me right now. My name's Nathan, and I'll be your tour guide in helping navigate the world of post-production relighting inside of DaVinci Resolve and help you build upon the image that's captured in camera and bring it closer towards the director's vision for the project. So let's get into a deep dive. Today we'll be covering three scenarios of relighting with increasing complexity. And we're gonna be using shots from red and black magic cameras. For simplicity, we're gonna be working in a color managed workflow. And to do that, we're gonna go into our project settings, go into color management. And today we'll be using DaVinci YRGB color managed. Now, if you hit save, this transforms it into a Rec. 709 color space, which for today is our desired deliverable. However, it limits the flexibility that we have when working within the Rec. 709 color space. So what we're gonna do is go back into our project settings. And for today, we're gonna be using the new DaVinci Wide Gamut, which is a large color space, but it still outputs at Rec. 709, which is our current desired color space. And now we can get started. So just looking at this image, for me, two things pop out right away. If we examine our waveform, we can see that it's really bright. And if we take our qualifier tool over top of our skin, we can see that it's definitely overexposed. But thankfully, these cinema cameras have a lot of dynamic range and we're not blowing anything out in our image, which means that we can easily make things darker and get it to a more desirable exposure level. So I'm just gonna label this node exposure. The second thing that stands out to me is that she kind of blends into the background. And if we examine our waveform again, you can see that she's definitely brighter than the trees behind her, but it doesn't quite have as much pop as I would like. So I'm gonna bring down this exposure a little bit more to get the skin where I want it. And just take down a little bit of that high end for these general exposure adjustments. And we're sitting in a much better place. Now we're gonna add a new serial node with Alt S. And because this tutorial is all about relighting, we're gonna skip over creating our look and jump straight into our secondaries. And we're gonna start relighting. Now, we're gonna use our power window, our circular power window, ensure that we have our power window tool, and we can see this window here. Now, by default, you're only selecting what is within this circle, and you can see that on your node here. But if you wanna clear a picture, we can select our highlight tool, and now we can see exactly what we're grabbing. So we really wanna focus on her face and a little bit of her body. So we're gonna manipulate the power window, and grab exactly what we want. Now, if you remember earlier, we set our exposure based off of our skin tone. So if we want her to stand out more, we need her to be brighter than the background. And a way that we can do that is we can invert our power window. Now we're selecting everything outside of this circle. So now what we can do is we can decrease our offset and it makes everything that's outside of this circle darker. Maybe bring down our gamma a little bit. And you can see that she definitely stands out more. We can see the before and after with Control D on our keyboard. And you can see she's much brighter, but we're getting kind of this hard edge here, if you notice that on her jacket. So what we wanna do is we just wanna soften out this window so that it looks a little more natural. So now when we see the before and the after, it's a much more smooth gradient, but still allows her to stand out. Now we're happy with the relighting, but let's say we wanna save this power window because we wanna do this a bunch more times throughout our movie. What we wanna do is you wanna click over those three dots and save as a new preset. You can then call it whatever you want and hit okay. Now, when we go over to our next shot, we have the same kind of problem with his face being too dark. So what we wanna do is we can go over and use our face relight. And now we have that window, we can easily put it on his face and make his face a bit brighter by decreasing the brightness of everything else around him. But we're not out of the woods yet. As we scrub through our clip, you'll notice that he actually moves around quite a bit. And let's say you want this window to follow him. Well, there's an easy way to do that. We're gonna go to the beginning of our shot and make sure that our desired window is selected. We're then gonna come into our tracker tool and we're gonna track the entire clip, in this case using Cloud Tracker because I find it just does a great job with these large windows. We can then track forward on the clip. And as you can see, that spotlight now follows him around and it's locked to his face 
throughout the entire shot. So now his face is looking great, but I see another problem. I find that this arm is way too hot. It's sticking out just a little bit too much. And as we examine our waveform, you can see the exact same issue. It's much brighter than everything else, and it's a little bit distracting. It really pulls me away from his face. So we're gonna create a new node with Alt S, and we wanna make that arm much darker. So what we can do, go into our power windows, and we're gonna select our pen tool, and we're just gonna draw a simple shape just around his arm. We can use our highlight tool to see the shape that we've drawn. Maybe we wanna soften that out a little bit. Now you may think right off the bat, we wanna make the arm darker. So to make things generally darker and overall affect the image, we just decrease our offset. And that does work, but it makes these shadows even darker than are on the other side of his body. And that's not necessarily what we want. So we don't just want the entire arm darker, we want these highlights taken care of, these brightest parts of the arm here. So we're gonna use our gain controls to just get that a little more under control there. So now it's at a much closer level to the rest of the image and it doesn't stand out quite as much. So now as we see the before and the after, you find that arm is way less distracting. And just like before, we can track it. So we're gonna track it to the beginning and now track it to the end of the shot. And now as we look at our shot, you'll see that his face stands out much more and that arm isn't nearly as distracting. So we can turn our relighting off and on again and it just helps him stand out a little bit more. So far, we've only been using relighting to fix problems with our image. However, you can do a lot more than that. You can use relighting to make creative decisions for your image that maybe you weren't able to do on the day. Now, as we scrub through this shot, you'll notice a few things. First off, our actor doesn't really stand out from the background too much, and it's very busy. We have this pattern on the wall, all these pictures here. It's hard to know what you're looking at. Now, we have a couple things that we can work with. We have obviously a window or some type of light source coming from over here which should be illuminating our actor. And maybe we can do something to draw us in so that we see our actor more than anything else. So we can creatively relight the scene in post to help do that job a little bit better and help deliver on the director's vision for the project. And because we're getting a little more in depth with our relighting, we're gonna go about this a different way. I'm gonna add a new serial node with Alt S. I'm then going to add a layer node with Alt L. So with a layer node, it's exactly that. You have the nodes layered on top of each other with this being the bottom, so this is kind of the base layer, and then these other layers are sitting on top of it. And as we add more inputs, we just make that layer stack even larger. So we'll label them as such. And this first layer is going to be the window. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into our power windows, and this time we're gonna use our gradient. And we can go into our highlight, and we can make adjustments to this gradient here. And we can use this gradient to act as kind of our light coming from this window. So now this is what we're going to cover. Now, if we turn this off and on, you can see there's no changes being made to the image. What we're going to do is we're going to darken the base layer and you'll start to see our changes kind of take place. So now as we turn this window off and on, you can see we're getting some light out of this window. So maybe we'll darken that base layer a bit more, decreasing our gamma and our gain a scooch. So as we turn the window off and on, you can see it's definitely doing its job and help drawing some attention to this side of the frame, but it's still a little messy on our right side of the frame. We got this puzzle, chair, all these photos. So we want something to lead our eye towards the actor. So how do we do that? Well, we go into our power windows and we're gonna enable our highlight and we can use our pen tool. Now we wanna draw, let's say a bar right over here. So it kind of simulates like a Venetian blind. Soften it up a little bit. And as we come into high life and disable this power window, you can kind of see it's starting to get the effect that we want, but things are gonna get complicated if we do it all within one node. So what we can do is we're gonna disable this power window. We're then gonna go into our layer mixer node and add an input. And we're gonna add a new serial node with Alt S. We're then gonna remove it from the chain and then link it up the in and the out. And we can label this node our blinds. Now we go into our pen tool and we draw out our little rectangle like we did before and we soften it up a little bit. So then we just add more curves and kind of rinse and repeat making these rectangles and softening them up. So now we have something like this. 
which is not bad, but honestly, now it's drawing a little bit too much attention. So we can easily fix this. We're gonna go into our power windows and we can do a little bit more. We can then add a gradient. And we wanna use our highlight tool. And we're gonna drag this over top. Now, how do we get these to work together in a way where we want it to fade off on the edges here? Well, what we wanna do is we wanna invert our mat. So now we're working with these power windows to create a mat that affects these power windows and kind of eats into it a little bit so that we can make a custom shape. So now, if we turn this off here, you can see that it's much more faded on the edges and it looks a little more natural, doesn't quite draw as much attention, but if we turn it off and on, you can definitely see it adds a bit of a flare to the image and helps draw our eye towards the actors. So now we can see how it looks before relighting and after relighting to help the actor pop out a little bit more and build upon the foundation that the camera and lighting team put together to align with the director's vision for the project.